Hey guys, check it out. We are here at about 10,000 feet above sea level in the heart of the Rocky Mountains. And if you recall, well, we are now on our third, that's right, third Land Rover Defender. And if you want to find out about that story, just go over to TFL Car and click on the latest Defender video because today we're doing something completely different over here at TFL Off-Road. Tommy, what are we doing? Well, it's our first snow in the Land Rover Defender. So this is the 2020 Defender with the six cylinder engine. We took delivery of this a few days ago and we're just gonna put it out in a little bit of the white stuff. Not too much, because it hasn't snowed in a few days, but it's the first drive in the new Defender. Yeah, so we're curious to see how this does in the snow. Now, there are a lot of different things that you need to be good in the snow. Uh, we can go over them right now. First and foremost, you need, well, good tires. And luckily, uh, this one came optioned with some pretty meaty tires. Why don't you show them? This is the off-road tire group that is available from the factory from Land Rover. They are Goodyear Wranglers. They're not the Duratrax. They're not the full-blown uh, like mud terrain Wrangler. They're the all-terrain adventure tires seen here with the 20-inch rims. They're very large tires and, you know, not a huge amount of sidewall to them, but they should be okay in the snow. Now, they are not snow rated like you'd find on some other all-terrains. Um, but we'll see what that means uh, when we get it into some compact, maybe icy snow. But other than that, it's got a lot of ground clearance because it has air suspension. It is quite heavy, which is, a, I think, a detriment in the snow. I mean, weight is always a detriment, but it does have a good approach angle. It does have a good departure angle, and it does have some good electronics. So, uh, you know what? What we'll do is we'll take a ride up to the start of Webster Pass. I assume it'll be closed just because, well... You know, we're in the middle of winter now, uh, and we'll talk about how it accelerates. We'll show you how uh, the different electronics work to keep all tires on the road, uh, and we'll see how it stops. All right, ready to go? Yeah, let's on head on out here. Now, this Defender, unlike the first two that we tried to uh, do the series on, this one is the SE, and the SE is uh, much more of a luxurious vehicle than the base end vehicles and then this one also has a lot of kind of cold weather um, accoutrements like the uh, heated windshield so if you look carefully you can see these little lines see those little reflections those are actually heating elements in the windshield and we also have heated seats and a heated steering wheel yeah look and the cool thing is you really can't see where the heated steering wheel is but when i start the car up uh, it backlights the little button and there's my heated steering wheel uh so you know i mean the original build was to make a very off-road worthy vehicle this one is more of a shallow um well no actually chalet not shallow shallow chalet uh, kind of vehicle right the kind you would take skiing and this is the kind of road that you would take to go skiing chalet is a big word for youtube dad <laughs> how about bougie i like bougie uh, how about mountain hut is that a small like the one behind us the one that's falling off uh yeah i think if you can afford one of these you can probably afford a little bit more than that dilapidated hut <laughs> But let's talk about some of the technology in this new Defender. So there are two engine options. We started with the four cylinder. This one has the uh, inline six cylinder engine. So it's called the P400. I think it makes right around 400 horsepower. horsepower. Yeah, let me uh, just try giving it the beans uh, and seeing how it accelerates, okay? Yep. Here we go, I'm just gonna give it full beans. Uh, there goes the turbo. I think the traction control is cutting in. Lots of confidence now. I'm on the brakes and I am skidding, dude. I am, this is completely, yeah, the tires uh, definitely are not snow rated. You can tell the difference, right? Because snow rated tires, the compound is softer. Uh, they have sipes. Uh, they're just designed to work better in the snow. Uh, and tires are the most important thing uh, that you can do to make your car much more winter worthy. Right, and typically a true winter tire will be uh, rated at temperatures below like 44 degrees. Whoa, Dad. I know, I was just trying to see it. It's, it's not ready for that kind of uh, aggressive uh, movement, at least with these tires. So I like this. Uh, County Road 5, Dylan. So this flicker is just the camera frame rate, I apologize, and, and, and what it's doing there. But uh, So this is a four-wheel drive vehicle with a high and a low range. It also has the adjustable air suspension. There's a button for the low range, but in the snow today, we're definitely not going to need that. But it also has uh, various 4x4 four four pages, and you can see uh, not only what the four-wheel drive system is doing, but what the uh, 
the uh, suspension is doing now. Uh, being a full-time four-wheel drive, there's a bunch of different ways that manufacturers can accomplish that. Typically, a lot of vehicles are front-wheel drive and then they can send power to the rear. This is a full-time four-wheel drive with the center transfer case. And you can see that little lock icon as we uh, accelerate and drive along. That will lock and unlock as it sees fit to distribute power to the wheels with traction. Yeah, the previous one, of course, would have had another lock right there, which would have been the rear diff. Now, in the snow, I mean, having a rear diff lock sometimes is helpful but oftentimes isn't uh you know it's not necessarily uh the end and be all why don't you show them the different drive modes so we've got terrain response which is something that land Rover pioneered so we have a bunch of different modes ranging from grass gravel snow mud ruts sand rock crawl there's a wade function and then this one also has the advanced um, capability groups we also have uh, configurable terrain responses which you can do through the screen but we can try putting it in grass gravel snow here and we can also activate low traction launch, which is kind of like a launch control from a start. So low traction launch on. Why don't you try accelerating and we'll see uh, see how it launches on this slightly snowy hill. Okay, here we go. Oh, it's really cutting power. Yep, so that's going to give you the, the best possible <laughs> acceleration for the terrain. It's the exact opposite of like a WRC car, right? It's not doing any tire spin. It's basically just, you know... Uh, letting the uh, traction control make sure that the tires are getting traction before it allocates power to them. It's actually good, you know, I mean, obviously if you're going to drive this thing like a, a rally car, it's not good, but for uh, being in the snow and for being, um, you know, in a situation where you can get eagle, eagle, easily stuck if you go off the road, uh, it's not bad. So we're going up to this uh, area where we usually go up to Webster Pass, and we took this up Webster Pass, and if you want to see that uh, video, it's on this channel. Uh, well, 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 hang on. We took a Defender up Webster Pass, right. not this Defender. Right, right, right. So um, as we start crawling up this mountain here, you can see that it has decided to lock the center diff, but there is no way to manually lock it, so I can't tap it. It's basically just going to lock and unlock as it sees fit. And the configurable, ter configurable terrain response is very cool here. I'll show you how that works. Um, so this allows you to adjust all the parameters of, of, uh, of the system. Come on. There it goes. So you can see, uh, actually there is a way to lock the center diff in the uh, configurable How version. How come there's an E at the end of center? Centra. <laughs> That's a British so I was wrong about that. This is my first time using the configurable system, so I just learned that. So you can see powertrain, relaxed, normal, responsive. You can change the steering. You can change the traction control. So if you wanted to launch like a WRC car, you could probably dial in some more wheel spin. Um, but right now we just have the uh, center differential on automatic and the way it's going to work is even though we don't have the rear diff even uh if we get wheel spin the, the vehicle can distribute torque to the wheels with traction regardless of uh of the diff lock because it's got the brake modulation it's not quite as effective as having a true locker but it does pretty well you want to uh jump outside and show what it looks like how it's doing in the snow yeah it's all compact here so we got away for some fresh powder here in colorado we haven't had too much fresh powder which is frustrating but it'll kind of get you a sense of what the Defender looks like in the real world. Now this one does have the premium LED lights, so we have that cool light signature. I do like the five spoke wheels. I think they look nice. Now the high end Defenders called the X, they have these tow hooks right back here on the bumper. And you can configure those aftermarket, but what we did instead is we have the tow package and we put on the little D-ring. So we have some recovery points in the rear. Always good in the winter. This one unfortunately doesn't have the rubber mats, so we're going to have to get a set of those. Although we do have the rubberized floors, which I think all Defenders have, but I'm sure someone will let me know in the comment section. You know what's cool? I also get my suspension um, right there in the center console, so it also tells me basically what my suspension is doing. The other cool thing is the suspension is very very uh, compliant in this kind of terrain it, it runs on a dual airbag system so we have one airbag that controls the ride height one airbag that kind of controls the up and down damping motion in theory what that means is that you could jack up the suspension using this button it'll go into offered height give you some additional ground clearance and you still have a soft ride i, I, I question whether or not it's <laughs> it's all that soft but it uh it is a cool idea yeah. in offered height i should say i question whether or not it's as soft as normal you know, um, 
I think this is actually a really good winter vehicle. I think we're just one set of, you know, snow tires away from having the ultimate uh, ski car and maybe even the ultimate, you know, snowy off-roader if you're willing to put the vehicle in danger. The one thing, of course, that we try to get, but once again, if you want to know why we didn't get was a winch. I love having a winch when, you know, you're in situations like this. Let's face it, Tommy, over the last 10 years, we've taken a lot of vehicles in the snow and we've gotten a bunch of them stuck. <laughs> Uh, and uh, there's nothing like having a winch to just give you a peace of mind that if something does happen, if you do happen to go into something where the vehicle gets stuck, and let's face it, this is a heavy vehicle, right? <laughs> Once it's stuck, it's stuck. It's not like you're going to push it out. The other thing too, Dad, is, um, you know, it's nice having the terrain response systems, but they're really, they're really not going to get you unstuck if you're, no, if no. you're in a really nasty situation. There's only so much that the uh, wheel speed sensors can do to distribute power before the laws of physics come into play. But, you know, we're getting into some relatively deeper snow here. The, the one thing that the vehicle can do, and we had a, oh God, it was maybe like five, six years ago, we took the um, uh, Range Rover Sport with summer tires, and that was completely my fault. We did <laughs> something like this, and we got it high centered. And, and I was hoping, snowmobile scene. I was hoping that what we could do uh, is raise it and then get it unhigh centered. Uh, and I tried that, but because the tires had no traction, even though the vehicle could lift itself off the ground, it didn't help very much because... Well, uh, the, the way the Land Rover, in theory, overcomes it, oh, we are not getting in there. Stop, Dad. Yeah, this, this is where Webster passes. Yeah, let me show you the snow bike. Yeah, show me snow. So, in theory, the way that... Uh, a vehicle can get unstuck like this Landover is if you get high center it's got this extra special high height but at some point if you don't have the grip on the ground so I think they built this snow barrier on purpose so fools like us and uh, $70,000 defenders wouldn't uh, try to go someplace we shouldn't but here we'll get a shot of the vehicle turning around we're gonna turn around here okay yep I do like the Tasman blue now, admittedly, over the last couple days, I have definitely warmed to this Defender. I was a little bit disappointed at first because I was really hoping for the, the base model, more off-road spec, but we're still going to do our independent testing with this vehicle as it sits, and we'll let you know how it performs. So, it's, it's down below there, Dan. We got a truck behind us. Yeah, I see him. All right. Pretty good. So I think yep. we figured out one thing, uh, and uh, that is that uh, we won't be doing a lot of off-road videos <laughs> for the next four months, at least not until the snow melts. We are, you know, at uh, what 10,000 feet above sea level, and we do get a lot of snow. So we will be doing a lot of snow tests. Uh, what's your call on this? Do you like it in the snow, Tommy? I do. I, I am a little worried about the weight because when it gets stuck, it's going to get very stuck if you know what I mean dad yeah. but the uh, the Land Rover system is, is a nice set it and forget it system in the snow unlike a uh, a vehicle like a, a Land Cruiser where you kind of have to manually lock the center diff for the best possible um, you know snow or off-road capability the Land Rover will do that automatically and then other vehicles also have selectable four-wheel drive so like pickup trucks will be too high and then four high and in too high it does nothing in four high you can't use them on the road the, the the new defender just cycles them on and off depending on uh, the, the the train you're on, so it's it's very good for that. Yeah, and I got to tell you, there's a lot to be said for having heated seats and a heated steering wheel <laughs> in the middle of a Colorado winter. So I do, you know, part of me misses that locking rear diff, but a part of me feels so happy to be uh, just sitting on a cold and snowy Colorado day, you know, with this command driving position. Uh, in a vehicle that's doing all the thinking for me uh, and allocating power to wherever the tires have traction. So, uh, yeah, and you know, it's super comfortable. And the other thing I'm gonna say is, you know, we originally spec the four cylinder, now we have the six cylinder. And when you get up here, you lose, you lose horsepower because you lose air density. And uh, this feels just a lot more relaxed. You know, that little uh, two liter turbo was really working, I felt up here, uh, but not this guy, this guy is, uh, it's just really chill. Yeah, there go some people on cross-country skis. Although well, luckily turbos do make up for it. Do make up for it slightly. Yeah. And you can't you can't of course eliminate the uh, the high altitude impact. But yeah, so let us know what you think in the comment section below. And as always, this has been uh, Roman and Tommy. Check out tflaffroad.com for the latest and greatest in the newest hey, off-road vehicle hey, Tommy, reviews. Should, should we go see if people are doing a little bit of? Uh, pre-Christmas tree cutting. This is where people come to cut down trees. We there's, can. Yeah, there's a trailhead here and everybody goes up here. Uh, I think it's $10. 
if you want to go cut your own tree. It's like, uh, you know, it's like it's like Christmas vacation up here, right? Everybody comes up here and, oh yeah, look at all those cars. They either bring their sleds up here or they come up here and uh, uh, go cut down their own Christmas tree. It's a really cool Colorado tradition. Uh, well, hang on. I think most of these guys are snowmobilers. Yeah, these guys have sleds for sure. All right, let's see if we see a car that has... Look at you and your off-road terminology. Let's see for, us, for us normal people, we call them snowmobiles. Or if you're in Alaska, snow machines. Oh, what's wrong? Are you, you think I'm just like, like whipping out the word sled? I, I, yeah, I think you're just showing off here now, Dad. Oh, come on. This is CFL Off-Road. We know all you guys know what a sled is, right? Uh, anyway, people come up here to this trailhead, uh, and then they go up there and they you know, get their ideal Christmas tree. Yeah, it's pretty cool, Tommy. All right, well, we'll see you guys next time. Ciao.